Eric Oaks lost his 19-year-old son, Adam Oaks, back in February. Adam was a freshman at Virginia Commonwealth University. Officials say that Adam died from alcohol poisoning after attending an off-campus fraternity party. Several people have now been charged in connection with his death. And Eric Oaks is joining us right now. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. I've read in an article um, that every day since your son has died, you actually wake up in tears. I do. What and just seeing his... Just seeing his picture now is bringing me to tears. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, I know this is hard to talk about, and the fact that you're on our air right now is such a privilege for us. But what would bring you closure in your son's death? I think at this time, global systemic changes to the fraternity system. Um, in every occurrence that you see, alcohol is involved. I mean, they need to have a zero tolerance policy for alcohol. All underage drinking, you know, is resulting in these deaths and other, you know, crimes. And that one thing right there, I think, will make a huge difference. Your son's death is still considered a misdemeanor. Is that correct? That is correct. In the state of Virginia, to haze someone to death is only a misdemeanor. You would like it to be upgraded to a felony charge? Absolutely. If you do anything to death somebody, how is it not a felony? Um, we're currently working with lawmakers in Virginia, Senate, our state senator uh, Jennifer Boisco, state senator um, Jennifer McClellan, and our local delegate Kathleen Murphy um, to bring forth legislation to the Virginia Assembly to have the law changed in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So what do you think that universities and college need, colleges are doing that is leading to these deaths happening time and time again? What is it that they can change, in your opinion, uh, that would actually prevent this from happening at all? I mean, there's a lot that they can do. Um, first and foremost, um, you know, with the advisor uh, role, uh, have two advisors, for example. Um, make them non-alumni, make them uh, over 25, and then uh, what you could do is uh, they could monitor each other. They have to be there for the entire event, whatever that's going on, and, you know, take responsibility. Um, you know, my son went to this, you know, sanctioned fraternity thinking it was a safe place. He thought it was a safe place. Um, you know, we just heard uh, our Aaron Nolan report on another hazing death in Kentucky. Uh, every time you hear this story, does it bring back memories of your son? Absolutely. When I heard the story a couple days ago, immediately it brought me back to, you know, February 27th. And I had to relive the whole experience again. And our hearts go out to the entire Hazelwood family. This shouldn't be happening. Have you forgiven? Uh, the fraternity, have you forgiven those at the school? It's really hard for me to to forgive them, you know. Um, so in my mind, no. In my heart, yes. But, yeah, I, I can't answer that as an honest yes. I have to ask you one more question. Um, obviously, you believe in harsher penalties. We talked about that. What would you love the world to remember about your son? Oh, my goodness. Um, he was just a joy to be around. When he walked into the room, it just brightened up. He'd greet you, greet you with a smile. He would, you know, immediately, if you were having a tough time, he would be there as, a, as an ear to listen to you and help you through it. And when you left, he gave you a great big bear hug. Well, I think that those who are watching right now, having seen and heard what you've been through, are sending you a virtual hug right now and, and hoping that you and your family receive the comfort and the closure that you need uh, immediately. Thank you so much for sharing your very personal story with us.